Good evening, I'm Joel Darby in Hong Kong and welcome to VIEW TV News. Coming up on the program tonight... Pork traders try to prevent the culling of thousands of pigs as the city grapples with an African swine fever scare. Police open fire on a French man in Chun Mun accused of trying to run down officers in his car. And as the trade war continues, wholesalers in China are feeling the pinch, with some seeing half their balance sheet wiped out. Good evening. Well, pork traders and the government are meeting for a second straight day, hoping to find common ground in tackling an African swine fever scare in Hong Kong. The industry is standing firm, trying to prevent the culling of thousands of pigs as a precaution. Armand Lee has the latest. <laughs> These pork traders and workers are protecting some 6,000 pigs in a Shengshu slaughterhouse. The government ordered the culling and the temporary closure of the abattoir after confirming a case of African swine fever there. The pork traders' negotiations with authorities broke down last night. We've provided them with many different options. That includes only culling the same batch of pigs which were imported with the infected one and sparing the other batches. They didn't give us an answer to those. We've also asked them to test the other pigs and they refused to do so. But health officials insisted culling all the pigs in an infected area is in line with international standards. And Health Chief Sophia Chen warns that any blockage would be illegal. Because we have already uh, issued uh, uh, through our legislation that the uh, Shengshu uh, slaughterhouse is now an infected site. So I appeal to um, the traders and also buyers uh, to cooperate with the government uh, and let our uh, operation you know, continue because this would be of the best interest. The Center for Food Safety says African swine fever isn't harmful to humans, but for pigs, it's deadly and spreads quickly. That's why the mainland has already called more than a million hawks to try to contain the outbreak. It spread to every province there since it was first detected last August. Mainland pork prices have been projected to climb by 70 percent, and this is likely to affect markets worldwide. The UN is already saying output could be cut by at least 10 percent this year. That's as the world's top pork consumer now has to rely on imports to make up for the shortages, forcing suppliers in the U.S. and the E.U. to step up. In Hong Kong, the traders slammed the move to cull, saying the remaining pigs should be tested first, and if they're not infected, they should be slaughtered and put out in the market. Almond Lee, VTV News. Police have arrested a French man in Tuan Mun who allegedly tried to run officers over. The 24-year-old was shot by a sergeant as he drove his car towards officers early this morning. Police were in pursuit of a suspicious car on Tunmun Road at about 2 a.m. The driver is accused of fleeing through a car park in Yaoi Estate, ignoring warnings to stop. The sergeant then fired three shots at the vehicle, one of which hit the suspect's arm. Police records show the man is a suspect in a drug possession case. They say the shots fired were reasonable as the man had threatened their safety. Our colleague's life was under threat and he had no choice. After giving a verbal warning but to fire three shots at the driver, the place the sergeant stood was very narrow and he could barely escape from the car. But the driver still sped up and tried to flee. The decision to open fire was within the guidelines. Well, as LegCo reels from Saturday's wild brawl over extradition law amendments, the chief secretary believes the bill is too complicated for the average Hong Konger to understand. In a blog post, Matthew Chung wrote, due to the complexity of the bill, it's not easy for the average person to fully grasp its content and it leads to misunderstanding. He added there were conspiracy theories about proposed changes and explained the main points of the amendment to, quote, further dispel doubts. Critics, of course, say the bill threatens Hong Kong's freedoms and have raised concerns about criminals receiving a fair trial if sent back to mainland China. Chungchao is jam-packed right now as locals and tourists celebrate the island's famous bun festival. We're a few hours away from the highlights, the bun scrambling competition where a dozen men and women climb a tower of lucky buns and try to grab as many points as possible. The higher the buns, the more points. 
Earlier, the streets there were also filled with young performers from the Pulisic Parade. There are 20 teams this year and current affairs seems to have taken a central theme. Some issues played up include the controversial Lantau Tomorrow proposal and the extradition amendment bill. OK, coming up next, the latest from the world of business. Well, a day after somewhat praising progress in resolving the trade war, the US president has fired off a new warning to China. Donald Trump says China would be wise to act now to finish a deal with Washington. In a series of tweets, President Trump said far worse terms will be offered to Beijing, going so far as to suggest the world's second largest economy is holding out for the 2020 election. On Friday, the US hiked up tariffs on 200 billion US dollars worth of Chinese goods. Talks are meant to carry on in the days ahead. Now, any tariff rise often has a trickle-down effect with those at the coalface really feeling the impacts. David Pollard looks at how exporters have been hit in the world's largest wholesale market, where in some cases businesses have seen half their balance sheet wiped out. The talk is mostly about trade at Yiwu Wholesale Market in the east of China. More and more, one word crops up. Tension between China and the United States has affected me a lot. Now we don't have any orders from the US. The business done here is mostly for export, even to followers of the man many see as responsible for their current woes. US tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese goods more than doubled on Friday. A further $325 billion of goods are a threat. The world's largest such wholesale market has taken a bad hit from a trade dispute that, for this toy seller and many like her, has turned into a dangerous game. We have lost about half of our orders. It's difficult to do business and difficult to get money back. If the trade talks blow up, it will affect the whole world, not just our market or China. It affects everywhere. Others look on the bright side. Domestic demand may fill some of the void, according to makeup brush seller Chen Nong. Hamleys, the world's oldest toy retailer, is set to pass from Chinese to Indian control. Reliance Industries says it has agreed to buy the British high street icon in a deal worth 88.5 million US dollars. Julian Satterthwaite reports. An Indian oil company is buying a British toy store. The tale makes more sense when you know the shop in question is Hamleys, famed worldwide. And the buyer is Reliance Industries, a giant firm best known for oil, but set on becoming a consumer champion too. The Hamleys chain is currently owned by Chinese group C Banner International. It bought the toy stores for just over $130 million in 2015. Hamleys has 167 outlets in 18 countries. But C Banner has since gone cool on British acquisitions. It dropped plans to buy 51% of department store chain House of Fraser, sending the group into administration. In 2018, it wrote down the value of Hamleys to about $90 million. Reliance is paying just a little less than that in the New Deal. Just small change for owner Mukesh Ambani, India's richest man. For him, the deal is all about reducing Reliance's dependence on oil. It's known for operating the world's largest single-location crude refinery. But it's venturing into retailing and telecoms with a string of new ventures. Reliance Brands chief Darshan Mehta says the Hamleys deal puts it into, quote, the front line of global retail. Critics will ask if shops are the right target, though. Famous stores around the world are shutting down or scaling back as online competition grows ever more fierce. In Cuba, new waves of US sanctions have threatened to choke a seemingly reviving economy, but foreign companies are challenging the new measures, upping investment in hotels on the island nation. Edward Barron has the story. With its Instagram-friendly architecture, idyllic coastline and antique cars, communist-run Cuba is a hit with tourists. 
Now the hospitality trade is facing U.S. sanctions aimed at choking Cuba's beleaguered economy. The Trump administration's tightening travel restrictions and they'll allow U.S. citizens to bring lawsuits against foreign companies profiting from property taken from them after Cuba's 1959 revolution. But foreign hotel companies like Kempinski are continuing to operate and invest. We know the threats. And honestly speaking, this is not nothing new, which came now there two, two weeks ago and uh, took us uh, as a surprise, uh, to be honest. But I think uh, the mood uh, in general is very positive. We have no intention of leaving or changing any plans that we have in the works. The U.S. administration is seeking to pressure Cuba's government into giving up support for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The EU and Canada, whose companies are top investors here, have denounced the U.S. actions. Previous presidents waived Title III of the Helms-Burton Act. It says anyone whose property was nationalized after the Cuban Revolution can sue companies profiting from their former holdings. Cruise operator Carnival Corps became the first company sued under the law last week. All right, time for a break now, but do stay with us. Up next, hostages saved in a daring French rescue in Burkina Faso make their first public appearance. More on that in just a moment.